Hello, everyone. I'm Charlie, and welcome back to another DraftKings DFS Soccer Slate Breakdown for the Premier League, of course. All right, let's go straight into it. I don't want to waste anyone's time. We have a four-game slate, no early game this week for a Saturday, which is a little abnormal, but Four games, four minus favorites on this one. So it's going to be an interesting one. Man City, the biggest. Ch- Chelsea, pretty big faves too. And small edge for Newcastle and a pretty decent edge for Bournemouth. All right, let's go to our first game, Bournemouth-Luton. In terms of set pieces, I expect it to be Tavernier and Cook at this team. If there's no Tavernier, it'll be a Christie cook split, which we saw about a week ago. And for Luton, Dowie um, takes the large majority. It might see maybe a little bit of Barkley, maybe a little bit of Townsend, but Dowie's the main guy on them. Chelsea, Sheffield United. Um, over the weekend, we saw Mudrick taking, or maybe it was last the midweek game, I think, actually. But we saw Mudrick taking a lot of set pieces and then Cole Palmer taking a little bit, even with Gallagher on the field which was a little different than what we saw a couple weeks ago when we saw Gallagher taking over Mudrick. In this lineup, hopefully we don't have to worry about that, just Gallagher and Palmer. If it's Mudrick, Gallagher, and Palmer again all together, I expect it to be Mudrick and Palmer, considering we just have to go with what's most recent. In terms of Sheffield United, Palmer, vast majority, maybe a little bit of McAtee, but mostly Palmer. We could see Norwood, which would lead to a Palmer-Norwood split, I imagine. Man City, Julian Alvarez has been taking a monopoly most games he's played in. However, we haven't, we've seen Pep switch it up from time to time. So we could see Foden come back on set pieces at any point. We could see Grealish come take some set pieces at any point. But for now, we just have to continue to assume that it'll be an Alvarez monopoly. For Crystal Palace, Olise, everything in this team. We saw him benched against Liverpool which almost worked for them and was working for most of the game. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Roy kind of do that again and go for a more defensive look to just try to stop City. At least I like is a great player, but he hasn't offered a ton at the back. Newcastle Fulham, we Trippier just got suspended, so there's going to be no him. We saw Longstaff take set pieces after Trippier got subbed in the Champions League this week. So that's not a bad played right there long stuff for monopoly we could see maybe gordon take but we have to long stuff long stuff's probably most likely right now for foam Pereira, everything in this team if we see william he might take a couple i don't know his status exactly but he's not in projected right now okay i have to pull let me pull up my draft kings tab so we can look at prices since i forgot to look at it oh if i don't screw up my typing um okay we're in sorry now this prepared i'm an amateur clearly okay in terms of prices holland is leading the prices at 10-4. He's questionable, though. I don't see him playing. I think it's likely that he's out. If he's starting, it becomes an interesting decision. You so know he's not going to beat 100% most likely. But, however, he's Holland, and he's kind of the best striker maybe of all time. That's a big decision if he plays. Let's just hope he doesn't for now. Bournemouth, 9,700 Stolanke. That is pretty crazy. He's been pretty good, but that is kind of extortionate. I don't really love that. And Kanku, he's supposed to be in the squad. I think there's probably zero way he starts. Sterling, like Chelsea even priced up a lot in general, considering of how poor they've been throughout most of the season. I don't really enjoy that. Julian Alvarez, he's been very, very not flory despite monopoly like if he doesn't get corners he doesn't get floor it just comes to that like he's got no real open play floor so you're kind of hoping for a goal contribution if you play him which is not crazy considering they are playing crystal palace and minus 550 
Um, so yeah, I think you probably end up just having to plug Julian Alvarez. Nicholas Jackson, I wish he was 2K cheaper. This price, I think, is a little absurd. I think for GPP, he's pretty interesting because I think a lot of people maybe will be a little bit scared of his price, but he could definitely, we saw, he's got the capability of having those good games like against Chelsea a few weeks ago where he scored that hat trick. Or Tottenham it was, sorry, where he scored that hat trick. But he was 6K then. Look at this. He's not been this much all season. It's pretty crazy. Um, Bernardo, he's been super hot. I think he's finally priced me out a little bit. I liked him a little bit more last week against Luton when he was 8K. I actually took down that slate with him. But uh, now I think I've seen enough, and I'm not really ready to ride that wave anymore for 9,100. Uh, Sinistera, that's expensive. I'm not really interested in that. Like all this, these guys are all priced up so much. I think it's a little odd. So Gordon is questionable. Let's hope he doesn't start so we can really get a for sure long staff monopoly. Bill Foden, I like him a lot. I think he's a great play on this slate. You maybe see him hop on sets again. He's been just getting there anyway, even without set pieces. Yeah, just that one game against Villa, and we saw all of City kind of have an off game. So, yeah, Phil Foden, I think he's almost core worthy for that price. So, Menu, I don't think that's a bad price. He, he's a little bit cheaper than the other Bournemouth guys we just saw. He never goes 90, but he's been one of their hotter attackers and not even that bad of a floor. Like, you take a seven, really. So, I think Semenya is not a bad play. Ishak, I think this is not a bad differential if we see him in. It gets, uh, the problem is Callum Wilson is back, so you imagine they're going to be on a bit of a timeshare. One will start, play for 60, and the other will come on for 30, no matter who's playing. So, bit of an interesting one. Joe Linton, he's been super hot. Dude, we saw him score that goal in the Champions League. He got a goal against Tottenham last Premier League game. Um, he's not really my kind of player. If we see him as an attacker on the wing, I could be a lot more convinced. We kind of see him as a box-to-box -box eight usually these days, which I am not as interested in, despite his good form. Miguel Almiron, I think that's a pretty good price for him. He's not been great, but he's putting up pretty solid numbers. I don't like I don't mind that as a play. Raul Jimenez, I liked him when he was 4K at home. Like they've had those two 5 0 games he's done well. I think away in Newcastle is a lot tougher at test, so I'm not as interested there. Townsend. Not for me, I don't think. Justin Cliver, that's a good good play. Not been great in terms of floor, but he's been starting every game. He had that game against Sheffield, that 20-pointer, which is what you're kind of hoping for against Luton. Justin Cliver, really good play for that price. Broya, this is just cheap Nicholas Jackson. So I love him. I don't really see him starting, considering they probably rested Jackson for this game. But if I, if I see him playing, I'm very interested. So basically, when it comes to these forwards, I'm interested in getting to the favorites as cheap as possible. <laughs> I think that's a good way to put it. And then just Man City, of course. Uh, midfielders, Olise against City. I don't really think it's his kind of game. He did all. Look at that. He's so good, though. Eight points in 20 minutes against Liverpool. I love him as a player, but I don't know if I can go here. But he's definitely... Making me think about him, that's for sure. Cole Palmer, 8,800. This is a good play right here. He'll take a little bit of set pieces. He's probably their most effective attacker, I'd say. He's on the penalty kicks. Like Cole Palmer. Talked about Foden. Tavernier, I like him a lot as a player. This is a good matchup for him. He's been priced up quite a bit, though. Like 8,300. I liked him when he was 7 and 6,500. I thought he was a lot more interesting for this. He's probably in play. I don't know if I'll get there in cash. In GBP, I'll definitely have some shares. Jack Grealish, I don't love him. He just is not that effective going forward. I know he's got these two goals. I mean, some do nothing against whoever that team was in the Champions League. I'm, mind is, or my 
like the name of them is not coming to me, but he played one half and did almost nothing despite taking set pieces that game too. So not really in love with Grealish. Pereira, I loved him when he was 5K at home. Now he's been priced up another two and as a harder matchup. Not, I don't think it's just as good of a spot for him. Mudrick, we've seen him get the set pieces off of Gallagher. He's been not great in terms of goals and assists, but I think he's worth the risk for this price against Sheffield United. So if Mudrick is in, I'd love him. Connor Gallagher, he'll be the guy if there's no Mudrick. I could I could play him for sure for this price at home. Especially like if they somehow rotate Cole Palmer and there's no Mudrick, we get like a Gallagher Monopoly lineup somehow. I think we had that against Everton, to be fair. Like I really think he's a great play. Oh, most of these guys are probably not going to play. Doey, I think that's not a bad differential in GPP. I think most people are just going to target those minus favorite teams, and Doey's probably the best of the rest of the plus teams, plus odds to get a result. But yeah, like he's gets get so many crosses. You've seen he's you've seen we've seen him take the large majority of set pieces recently again. So I think that's not even that bad of a play. Rodri, he was super chalk when he was 4K against Luton. He's been priced up a little bit. I, I kind of think that people will be a little bit scared to play him. So I think he's going to be kind of interesting. Just as a, another way to cover City and a cheaper way to do it at that. Any of these other guys, like... Not really. Gimar Reich is all right. He's been pretty good. I don't think that's that bad. Same with Lewis Cook. I'm always a fan of set piece takers. He got that assist against United when everyone played against Palace and we had a four. But I'm not I don't mind going back to the well here. I think that's a pretty good play. Even at five K priced up a little bit. I think that's not bad. Armor. I was oh, no, I click on Clyber. That's a good play. Talked about him already though. I'm gonna click on Hammer. Got there against Brentford. That's like the only time he's got there. Chelsea, we know, are not the most solid of teams, though, despite the odds. So I don't think that's even that crazy of a play, honestly. Maybe if he's that, that game last game was maybe just going to start his season now. We need to see kind of the player we saw when he was back at who was he at before? Was it Luton? I don't think it was Luton. Escape mind the, the just escaped my mind again, but he used to be super good in the championship Palmer before he went to the Sheffield. So hopefully we see that again at some point. Mika Hamilton, this guy was insane in <laughs> Champions League. He got his goal. He took some corners, I think, too. Or maybe it was Bob, but he was definitely standing next to him. And 4K, if he starts, I, I kind of like that. He, I, I wasn't even sure what position he was playing when he started that game. He was a right wing. Maybe he's switch to left wing in the second half. When we see Mika Hamilton, and I'm definitely interested. Lewis Miley got an assist in the Champions League. I always have a little bit. I don't see that changing, especially at that price. Jacob Brown, I think that's not bad as GPP for that price. I think Bournemouth like, are not going to be that crazy of a team. They're not going to dominate as much as like, you think they would at minus 200. So I don't mind that. Um, I'm not really interested in the rest of these guys. Will Hughes, maybe if there's no Elise, he got there against Liverpool. Man City, I think, is a little bit tougher than that, but maybe. Defenders. Look at how many guys are suspended or injured. All of them. All the top top defenders. <laughs> So because of that, I feel like it's probably a pay down defender slate. Like there's not a ton of really strong options here. Kyle Walker, I never really love since you never know if he's going to be kind of at center back ish or a right back because of how Pep swaps his system so often. So I'm never really interested in him. I like Anthony Robinson, but I think that this is just too tough of a matchup for him. Despite his good form, I'm not really interested in that either. None of these defenders really entice me. That's why I think it's such a pay down slate. Liveramento, I don't think that's bad. He's been all right at home, especially. 
And I think it's just punts, honestly. Like, it'll be Caldwell at fullback, probably. He's not that attacking. You just hope he gets some sort of assist just from being in the attacking half and passing to a guy who maybe dribbles and scores. <laughs> um, how much is DeSassi? 3,100. I think that's pretty good if we see him at right back. If we get to him naturally. Rico Lewis, if he's in the midfield, I know he didn't do anything as Villa, which was last time he started there. But I think he's just another – like, he'll, he's, he'll play basically as an attacker when he's starting for City in that position. So, if we see midfield Rico Lewis, I think that's probably the best defender on the slate, honestly. Like, there's not really anything here. Matson, How come Matson doesn't play? Like, he'd be a good player if he actually got minutes. Like, John Stones in midfield is pretty good. If we see him start there, I can play that. I think it mostly is playing whoever fits, depending on what attackers you go. Because there's no – I don't think there's a real defender who can hurt you that much here. Like, there's no Trippier who's going to potentially get 25 points. No Reese James is potentially going to get 25 points. Like, none of these guys should really break the slate. If they do, it'll be 12, but you're just going to punt for a goal anyway. Like one of these center backs won't score. I don't really see any other path for any of these other guys to really get there. And Cleo, if he plays, I like Cher a lot. He'll take direct free kick. He might take all the direct free kicks now with no <laughs> trip here. Like he gets a shot a lot of the time because of that. So yeah, I like Cher a lot. This is a cheap price for Hockey Manderson. He's been one of like the highest floor center backs in the league. It's Man City though, so you probably should stay away, honestly. Luke Thomas, if he plays, that's cheap enough where he's interesting. Although I don't think he's started a game over Chris Wilder, under Chris Wilder. And there's just like nothing here really. So I think realistically, just play over fits. Play two Man City center backs or play one of the Chelsea fake fullbacks. In terms of a core, I think you just go here. You go bang, bang. And then maybe either Mudrick or Gallagher. I think it's really that simple in terms of a core. Like, it's, like Chelsea is too much for what they are mainly like or like the attackers that are not the set taking ones like Jackson like this is all too much I think you just end up going Foden Alvarez and Cash GBP yeah you can definitely get different with any of these guys throw a tab in there something like that but yeah I think it's a pretty actually pretty straightforward cash build which is a good change of pace for me so yeah guys hope you enjoyed uh good luck on the Saturday slate guys and have a good time over these fest this festive period. Later.